In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create Google Ads price extensions, which are well worth adding to Google Ads search campaigns if you haven't already. Now, price extensions, the name is fairly self-explanatory. They allow you to show the prices of various products, services, etc., in your Google ad, and they do a couple of good things. Firstly, if price is a selling point of yours, if you're competitive on price, you may want to put that front and center as a price extension. Maybe you also have it in your headline, etc., in your ad, but having it right there as a price extension is a great idea. It's gonna help you get the click, help you get the conversion. But on the other end of things, if you're more expensive within your marketplace and you want to pre-qualify the people that click on your ads and come through to your website, you can do that with price extension. You can show that your prices are relatively high and that's gonna dissuade people that are looking for the lower end of the market and make those that do click more likely to convert and save your budget. So well worth taking a bit of time to go ahead and set these up. With that said, let's get into it. So to create a price ad extension, you want to come into ads and extensions, click on extensions, and then we're gonna go ahead and click on this little plus and scroll down to where we see price extension. Now, as with other Google ad extensions, we can add these at the account, campaign, or ad group level. When it comes to creating price extensions, most of the time we're going to be adding at the ad group level, sometimes at the campaign, and that's because Price extension is usually gonna be very specific to a certain product or service. It's not like other extensions where you might have things that apply to all the campaigns you run in your in your account. That's un, that's more, less likely with a price extension where you do want to get more specific. So most of the time we're gonna be adding at the ad group level. Okay, and then we get into these four sort of boxes where we need to decide what we're going to add in. First is language, fairly self-explanatory. I'm gonna go ahead and select English. And then we've got type. And if we click on the drop down, you can see that Price extensions aren't just for product-based e-commerce businesses. You can also use this for services. So we've got brands, events, locations, neighborhoods, product categories, product tiers, service categories, service tiers, and services. So again, you have to use um, the default here. You can't enter in your own option, much like a structured snippet ad extension, for example, um, but you wanna go through and select the one that's most appropriate for your business that you think might apply. I'll talk about creating others um, later on. And then within that, you can obviously list out the various options that you've got. I'm gonna go ahead and select brands for demonstration purposes. Then we've got currency, obviously an important thing to add in. Again, fairly self-explanatory, just use the one that's going to, you know, is gonna be most meaningful for your uh, for your prospects. I'll leave it at USD for now. And then price qualifier is quite interesting. Sometimes it's apply, sometimes it won't, but you can add in from up to average. So if you're offering a range of products or services within this price extension um, item, then obviously these are the sort of things that are going to make sense. If it's just a concrete uh, number, this is what we're selling this for, and it's more of a, an actual item as opposed to a range, then you, you can just go with no qualifier, which is the default. So whatever you want to do here, just you know whatever makes sense for what it is that you're advertising. Okay, the next thing we need to do is go in and add a header. Now it's important that whatever header you add here fits with the type. You know, we couldn't say type um, and then select events and then go with something like a pair of shoes. You know, that, that doesn't make any sense, right? It has to fit, otherwise Google's gonna have an issue with that. So if we're going with brands as our example, we could, for example, put in something like iPhone 15, okay? You know, that's a, a branded product. Then we need to go ahead and enter in a price. No idea exactly what they sell for, but probably something similar to that, maybe a bit less. Um, and then we've also got units here, which is interesting. So these are going to apply more to say service businesses, or if you're selling some sort of subscription, maybe an app, some sort of SaaS business, then you can, you know, it costs you this amount per hour, per day, per month, per year, etc. Okay, fairly straightforward. If you're a hotel, per night. So you may or may not want to add this, again, depending on what you're advertising. Here, it's not the sort of thing that we would be looking to go in for selling a, an iPhone, for example, okay? And then we get into the description. Often what we're going to enter in here is something to help sell whatever it is that we're advertising. So for example, you can see the examples given are like full range of sizes, limited availability. These are the default that the Google's providing. We could have something like um, free shipping or 24 hour shipping or something like that. Lots of different options that you could enter in here. Just something quick and simple. You've only got 25 characters to try, have, try and help sell the click and ultimately sell the item. Then the final URL, that's obviously where you're going to be sending people. So in this case, if we were selling iPhones, for example, we would want to send um, people to the product page most likely. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the final URLs because there's different strategies around that, but most likely send to the uh, the product page. I'm just going to leave this blank because obviously this is just an example. Now, as we're going along, we can see what this looks like on 
the right hand side in the preview. So we've entered in this first part of this price ad extension, iPhone 15, $2,000 free shipping. And this right here, this first part is what's called a price extension item. And we need to go ahead and add in other items. I'm gonna to get to that and more best practice in a minute. Before I do, I just wanna quickly let you know about our Google advertising services. So my company offers done for you Google ad services. We can create, manage and optimize your campaigns. If you're interested, you can find out more by clicking on the link in the video description below. That'll take you to a page where you can book a call with one of my team members. We do have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement, but if you meet that or you're about to meet that, go ahead and book a call, find out more. Hopefully we get a chance to work together. Okay, so as I just said, we need to create some more price extension items. So you need at least three and you can create up to eight. So if we scroll down to this price extension item section and then we need to add in some other stuff. So perhaps if we've got iPhone 15s being sold, we could have iPhone 15 S's and perhaps they're, I don't know, they more or less, I've no idea. Let's say they're less no units again, um, and we can enter in you know, our description once more. And then obviously maybe that would go to a different product page in our final URL. So once you've created at least three price extension items, remember that's the minimum Google will require for you to be able to, to run this ad. And you can add more than that if you want, and you can always come up here and see what it looks like both on mobile previews. So you can see there's like a scroll that you're able to check out. And then on desktop, you're likely just to see um, the three. So you have to add in the three. You can also reorder them. So if I minimize these down, we could go ahead and if we wanted to put the iPhone 15s first over the iPhone 15, then we could do that and you could order them around vice versa. Um, and that's going to potentially just change the way that it's being displayed to users. Now, another interesting thing that you can do with price ad extensions is you can choose where you send people. So I briefly mentioned this earlier, but I want to go into that in a bit more detail. Here we've given an example of where we're sending people directly to a product page, but you could of course send them to a category page. Instead of breaking down various products, we could send you know, let's say we sell lots of different types of phones. We could have one category page for all the Apple related products and another category page for, you know, some other um, phone provider. So um, that might may or may not be the better approach for your business. And I encourage you to test this. Remember that in order to get the sale, to make your campaigns as successful as possible, you want to make it as easy as possible for your prospects to find what it is they're looking for. Sometimes that means they can go straight through to the individual product. Other times, they're going to want to go through to a relevant category and then maybe search the options from within there. So when someone clicks on one of these price extension items, do they go straight through to the product or do they go through to the category instead? You can even send people to your homepage if that's the most relevant option. So don't always think it has to be a specific product and you have to send them there directly. You can be a bit more experimental with this and I encourage you to test that out because it can work better sometimes sending them to a category, particularly if people don't know exactly what they want before they click. Another thing to think about is the order in which you put your price extension items and the price points of those things. So if you're trying to sell the click and you're trying to uh, demonstrate that you've got really good prices and that's one of your selling points, I'd recommend that you go ahead and put your cheaper things first and then slowly get more expensive in the list of price extension items because you want them to see that really well priced thing at the beginning that's going to grab their attention help encourage the click if you're at the other end of the spectrum and you're let's say a high-end service provider and you only want people to click you have budget then you want to go ahead and put some of your more expensive things at the front um, because you're going to put off people that are after a bargain, something like that. So just have a think about the order in which you display your price items and what it is that you're looking for and how you're positioning your products and services. As I said, this, this doesn't just have to apply to products, which is what a lot of people think it does with price extensions. It can apply to services as well. You can see with things like the types, and with the units, it's very much geared up for services as well. The next thing to think about is which items to actually include in your price extension items, which of your products and services. Because if you've got a massive range, you might think, well, where do, what do I do here? I would recommend including your most popular, the ones that sell the best. Those are the ones you want to lead with. If other people have been more interested in those than your other products and services, it's likely that your future prospects are going to be the same. So you wanna start with your best foot forward and at least start with those. If you're in a situation where you've got lots of stock, for example, or lots of capacity of one particular product or service, and you want to sell that out, then fine, it's fine to promote that. But in terms of getting the best results from Google Ad Campaign, you want to go ahead and advertise your most popular products in your price extension um, items first. Another great tip with price extensions is that you can actually offer something that's free in a price extension item. So if you offer you know, a lead magnet or a free sample, for example, you can go ahead and enter zero as your price, Google will allow you to do that. 
Um, and this can work really well because obviously that's the sort of thing that can really stand out on the page when someone's searching. They can see something that's got a price extension and you can see these price extensions, particularly on mobile, demonstrated really quite big. And if it says zero, <laughs> everyone loves the idea of that. So for example, if you were selling, I don't know, makeup or something like that, you could have some sort of free sample in there. And that's what you could go ahead um, and enter. So I'd encourage you to have a good think about this and how you might be able to make this work for your business. If there's anything you do offer for free or could offer for free, often a great idea to go ahead and put that in a price extension. It's one of those where the types of businesses that give away lots of free things often don't think of using price extensions, but this is a great way to sort of get around it and to use it. One other thing you need to be aware of when it comes to price extensions is that between your price extension items, you need to use different headers. So you couldn't, for example, just put in free sample, free sample, free sample. You'd have to put in, you know, free something sample in one, free something sample in another to differentiate between the two. But you can use the same pricing and you can use the same descriptions across multiple different price Price extension items. So if you wanted to highlight the fact that you've got free shipping across your entire range and that applies to all the products that you are promoting with your price and ad extensions, then great, you can go ahead and do that. You don't need to differentiate there, but you just need to, at the header, something to watch out for because um, if you violate that, you won't get your price extensions approved and, and that's a bit of a pain. So now you know how, make sure you go ahead and set up your price ad extensions. Just about every business advertising using Google search campaigns can add in price extensions of some sort, and I'd strongly um, recommend you take the time to do so. I'd also recommend that you create all the other ad extensions that you can, those that apply to your business. A lot of Google advertisers don't create structured snippet ad extensions. I created a video here that you can go through that shows you exactly how to create them, set them up. It's got a lot of examples and best practices, well worth having a quick watch.